So if you want to keep in touch, you can follow our Instagram page. And uh, Hujam, floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. So now I can, uh, I, you know, oh, by the way, I'm Naoki, don't get afraid. She been <laughs> snap coming and roof for the quite. Uh, she said, thank you for inviting me. And my name is Naoki Yamoto. My Muslim name is Kayim. Uh, I'm <clears throat> now currently I am the lecturer at the Ibn Housing University. And, and I am teaching the Tasawwuf in East Asia and Southeast Asia. And also I'm now I'm teaching the Japanese language course as well. So uh, today's topic is about manga. So, you know, uh, then I would like to start my presentation from now on. So I'm gonna share my, oh, wait, pardon. But Kaunas used even Okay. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So I'm gonna start. I want to start my presentation from now on. Uh, by the way, uh, I think you know, you give me the really good opportunity for me because the just a year ago, uh, even Harding University and Kyoto Seika University in Japan had had an MOU you know, the collaborative agreement, you know, between these two universities. And the Kyoto Seika University is one of the first university which established the manga faculty, you know, the manga faculty. And we are planning to organize some kind of, uh, like a, a collaboration, you know, project, some of it. And one of, uh, one of the project is that, you know, to open the introduction to manga studies at Ibn Haldi University. Uh, you know, I named this course as Introduction to Contemporary Japanese Culture and Manga, Anime, and Humanities. And, you know, uh, and especially I want to organize this course for the Turkish students uh, because I don't know how much, you know, Turkish students are, well, first about, you know, the Japanese animations or like, I want to organize the, uh, according to their interest. So if there are somebody who wants to help me to write the syllabus, currently I am writing a draft. Uh, please contact me like, personally, and I would like you know I would like to you to invite to the uh, like a group. So I'm gonna write my email address right here. Edit it. Like Naoki Nokta Yamamoto at ifu.l.tr. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, before you know entering the content, I would like to uh, introduce myself first. My, uh, again, my my name is Naoki Yamamoto. I was born in Okayama, so I'm Japanese. I was born in 1989, and the, uh, I got a PhD from the Kyoto University uh, as a title of Asian and African Studies at graduate school. And my research topic is actually Tasawa. Like I'm not a specialist on manga, like, but right now I am writing uh, uh, essay series in the uh, Shu Asia publisher. And the Shu Asia is one of the biggest publisher who is the publishing, you know, the Shonen manga. Like, do you know Jump, like Shonen manga Jump, like in a magazine, like Naruto or Dragon Ball or any other, like that. So, you know, they are, the, they are the publisher of those manga. And in my essay series, is, uh, which is titled uh, Introduction to Tasawu with a comparison with manga, you know, I am trying to find find some like a similarity uh, between Islamic civilization and Japanese civilization. And I found that this manga or animation could be like a keyword for Japanese audiences uh, to understand Islamic heritages. And also you know, the, uh, the people who live in Islamic civilization to understand like, uh, you know, the Japanese culture as well. So, you know, I, I believe that this manga anime could be like interesting, like in the uh, bridge uh, between you know the Islamic civilization and the Japanese culture. But by the way, like you know, when it comes to the manga, you know, the manga is a production in Asia right now. But when I say East Asia, like you know, what kind of image do we have? Like, for example, like you know, now East Asia is famous for its technology, like you know, Xiaomi or the Samsung. Like whenever you go to like you know, telephone company, I'm sure you find it like in you know, Chinese or like a or the Korean like products. Unfortunately, the Japanese product now being like got disappeared. Uh, so as a Japanese, I'm I'm a little bit like you know, got, you know uh, I'm becoming sad. But at least what I say is that now East Asia is rising. Like now the East Asia is becoming one of the most richest and the cutting edge like in the area in the world. 
or then maybe those who are studying about history, uh, you might found that you know this East Asia is one of the most uh, no one of the oldest civilization which produced the most sophisticated philosophies. Was that the Confucianism or the Mozi or the, you know the Laozi or they have they even have like Islamic scholar as well. For example, in my graduate uh, graduate class, I am teaching that how the Chinese Islamic scholar like you know, embraced, you know, both Islamic heritages and also the Chinese heritage. And, you know, they memorized you know, like thousands of these Chinese philosophy as well, but also, you know, they, uh, they try to introduce Islamic concept to the Chinese, uh, uh, Chinese civilization. So now China is known as some kind of like a threat, you know, the new superpower of, you know, the 21st century. But we might understand that, you know, this, uh, how can I say, like Han civilization, you say Chinese character civilization is one of the most international like civilization like the, in the, uh, through the human history. And also we should not forget about, you know, this Korean pop culture as well. I, I, uh, I'm sure like, you know, Korean, like, you know, uh, like TV series or the Korean movies are also becoming really popular in Turkey, I know. For example, I also watched Crash Landing on You. It was really good. Like, they are so handsome. And also, you know, I also Parasite as well. You know, both are, you know, uh, they're really good at, you know, making the TV series as well. But also they're, uh, uh, you know, these Koreans are now the best people who make a movie which, uh, you know, uh, criticize the current, uh, like a current, how can I say, like injustice of the 21st century as well. So in this way, like, you know, this East Asian pop culture has becoming like a cutting edge, like in product uh, right now. So, uh, so right now it seems that again, China and Korea are more active, you know, they have like more or has energy to produce like new things. And but how about the Japanese culture? Like, what do you uh, what do you have image about like Japanese, like Japan? That's it. Like someone who just taking photos in in Surat Ahmed, or like you know, I don't know. There's someone who just you know uh, always like playing video games or hikikomori or something whatever. But I'm sure when it comes to Japan, I think one of the most uh, popular like culture is this Japanese anime. Like uh, this is the uh, you know. Uh, a few of my favorites of the, you know, the current Japanese animation. Now, but this is Kimetsu no Yaiba is English the translation Demon Slayer. You know, this was, you know, the, uh, you know, it becomes the, one of the best selling manga like last year. And this movie, you know, animated version was also like, you know, it just slays the society. Now, now, I think almost, I don't know, it seems like you know, more than 80% of, you know, the population in Japan watched this animation. And this Evangelion, I think Evangelion, uh, Evangelist, uh, Evangelion is also, this is like a robot movie, but you know, this is one of the like epoch, uh, epoch making anime, you know, uh, during the millennium, like two, uh, 2000. And you know, right, and this here, the last series of this Evangelion uh, comes out and it is also like, you know, earn lots of money. And this Crush of Titan, uh, you know, this Crush, you know, attack, well, in Japanese, it's Shingeki no Kyojin. Do you know English title? Attack on Titan? Attack on Titan. Yes, yeah, so oh, Attack on Titan. Yeah, Shingeki no. Actually, Attack on Titan is a wrong translation, I think, because Shingeki no Kyojin itself has a special meaning in the last season. The last season. So now that this is last season, the final season came out, but it just came out when I was a university student, I think. And, you know, I got so shocked that how, you know, how good this storytelling is. You know that how the character is so humane, and also you know it has two sides. You know the character is so complicated. You know there is no like kind of like a you know simple story that there is just bad guy and good guy and good guy win and happily ever after and that's it. No, you know especially from the second season, it has lots of like political themes, and also it has like you know uh, you know the the protagonist. You know they have noticed that there is kind of manipulation behind the politics, and also like you know. They also find the you know the truth of the islands and so on. So you know I don't want to do a spoiler, but this final season is for me it was you know one of the best you know, anime uh, manga uh, I have ever read. So you know uh, and some of you know animation are also available on Netflix. So if you are interested in Japanese anime, 
uh, you know, I would definitely recommend you watch some of it. But if I say anime, you know, uh, I think, you know, when I talk about anime, the, uh, I notice that most of the things are saying that, you know, anime is just only for the child. So if I say that Japanese are really good at making anime, especially my, you know, my parents' generation, not my parents, uh, they think that, you know, Japanese are like, just creating the millions of SpongeBob, you know, the, uh, almost every year. But this is not correct. You know, Pikachu, okay, yeah, of course, Pikachu and SpongeBob, they are both yellow, but Pikachu are more than being yellow. Like it has like a clear philosophy behind it. Like, well, maybe maybe SpongeBob has a philosophy, but maybe it's a different philosophy. Like we have a different worldview, and we have uh, even we can say that we have a different humanities. You know, it's strongly based on our own culture. And even in Japan, this manga or anime has been mar marginalized for the uh, for the decades that in just like you know the subculture like it cannot be the high culture it cannot be like center of the you know the uh, the history of the Japanese culture but I know I think the situation is changing right now for example like even in the West world you know this Brit uh, British Museum they hold the you know the biggest exhibition on manga and anime uh, in the Western countries. And I heard, and as how far as I read the article, that it gains like you know the uh, like in thousands of you know participants here. And I also visited you know before Corona, I was very really lucky, and I watched you know the quality was actually so so. You know there was also the manga museum in Kyoto, Japan. Actually, it has more like you know, it has more like a discipline, and you know well organized. So you know this beauty this museum exhibition was not that you know really good quality, but yet. You know, I think this is like an epoch making event that right now the manga animation is be not only the subculture, actually now it's transforming into the center of the Japanese culture. Like now it's a symbol of the East Asian culture, I, I, I might even say. And many people think that, you know, manga is just this modern product like the Pikachu or, you know, whatever. But actually this manga, you know, the most of the animation uh, are based on the manga. You know, there's original manga, like a uh, manga uh, the books. And then based on this manga, you know, the animation company, they make the, make the animated version. And this manga is actually not a modern product. It's a method of expression in Japan with 800 years of history. So 800 years. So manga is not only the mod in the modern culture, not, not the pop culture, but it's also a traditional science in Japan. Science that can be eaten. This is, a more, this is the, you know, traditional humanities, which the Japanese try to depict the deepness or of the uh, sophisticatedness of the human being. Uh, so this was you know, considered as the oldest manga in the Japanese history. It's called Choju Giga. I can write though. Choju Giga. Choju Giga. I read in kanji. Oh, by the way, uh, if you take my Japanese course, eventually you can you know read Japanese and you know Chinese characters. So you know, let me you know advertise my course as well. So if you are interested in Japanese manga, just take my Japanese course. And this, and this is one of my favorite as well. It's the Vagabond. It's based on the you know the story of the samurai called Miyamoto Musashi. Uh, he is also uh, the author of the Slam Dunk. Uh, it's the basketball manga, and you know this was really cool as well. So while the manga can be categorized as the you know, traditional expression, you know traditional art in Japanese history. Uh, anime can be like you know the categor categorized more the pure like modern, uh, you know the modern art or the modern method of you know expression, because you know there is no machine in, in the medieval century. You know the, you know it came out especially after you know the Second World War. You know, and it's closely rate, uh, related to the spread of television. Uh, you know, especially after the Second World War, because this is a symbol of Jap uh, Japan's post-war reconstruction. Like after the Second World War, now we didn't have anything. The America, I mean, just bomb, uh, bomb everywhere. And even my small city, you know, there was not nothing. Like, you know, just, you know, uh, they just, you know, uh, completely bomb, you know, burn everything. And, but after that, you know, Japanese tried to reconstruct our own country. And this, 
Uh, what did I say? I think, I'm sure the students are all young. Uh, can you guess what it is? This is television, actually. It's old type television. That even when I was a child, you know, I, I had this old type television. Like, but, but right now, you know, I'm not sure why, like, right now, the modern television is so thin. Like, it's just like, you know, the, the paper. Oh, and this is, you know, Sentakuki. This is, uh, you know, Chamashiro Makinasi, like washing machine. And this is Wilbrado, refrigerator. So, you know, during the, uh, you know, the reconstruction period, uh, this, uh, you know, refrigerator and television and washing machine were believed as something like three key items to build our societies again. So this was a symbol of you know, our, like the status that now we have reconstructed our country again. And most important thing is television because refrigerator and you know, washing machine is more about like daily life, but you know, this television is the, uh, the cutting edge like media. And right now, and now every family started to, you know, when they become uh, becoming uh, like rich enough, they almost, uh, you know, every family started to buy this television and now they have television in, you know, living room. Before that, you know, they don't have any television. And this television, they are like broadcasting not only the news, but they also like, you know, the TV, like the uh, like TV series, like, yeah, like you know, literally TV series, like drama. And what well, we may forget that, you know, uh, with the spread of television, there's some of the Japanese company, they started to broadcast this animation, anime. So this is the verse of the anime. So uh, when you want to study about the anime, like in a more, uh, like deeply, uh, you, must, and you must also understand the history of Japan as well. Because the uh, development of animation uh, is based on the development of the Japanese society. So, uh, you know, the every, Epoch making animation has some influence, uh, got influenced by the society at that time. Like even this Attack on Titan, the same. Like, you know, the, the Attack on Titan has, has much more attractive to the uh, generation they are living, uh, you know, the younger generation they're living in this time as well. And Evangelion as well. Like every animation has some like a connection to the society. So we also need this kind of like sociological thinking. So. <clears throat> And, you know, we, I keep calling this manga animation as like this pop culture, popular culture and so on. But, you know, we must also, uh, we must not underestimate the like power of the animation, especially in the aspect of like building morality. Like, do you know the keyword Futuwa? Futuwa is the, one of the, you know, the main key, like in uh, the concept of even how the university, it's about like a more, like a morality building, especially for aim for the youth. And you know, in my essay series, this introduction to the Sabo with the comparison of man manga, I keep calling this manga animation, especially shonen manga, is the futuwa manga, like futuwa, futubet manga. Why? Because the, every week, you know, the children right now, now everybody has TV. Now it has like a laptop as well. Like every week in a Sunday, in a weekend, uh, asa means morning. The every morning 9.30, you know, the TV company broadcasts one piece animation. So the children, you know, they, you know, uh, they push themselves to wake up early and this watch manga. And this manga has a lot, uh, has a lots of messages. Like, you know, they teach about importance of the, you know, sincerity. You know, and also they teach about like, you know, the, uh, the disciplinedness and they also talk about integ integrity and, and such. And oh, well, uh, we don't have like a strong, I guess, like, like a moral education in the public school because we because Japan is a secular state. So this weekly TV anime program can, is somehow is working as a source of morality of the you know especially the younger uh, young Japanese generations. Like even myself, like uh, I'm sure that I never anything in public school. Maybe I learned some math mathematics or English or anywhere, whatever. But I, uh, but I'm sure I never learned morality from my teacher in the public school. But I can definitely say that I learned what real man is from the Luffy or the you know Zoro or Naruto or the Full Metal Alchemist. So this is how the Japanese are you know uh, reproducing or uh, I can say like a code of ethics. And so we could show in Jam like Alhamdulillah like you know the. It has like 500 pages, 
but it's only like about like 20 zera. So it's quite cheap. Like you know, if, if you can just save like two or three like a drum, or just you know if you don't eat like a, you know rahumajins for like in four days, you you can afford to buy it. So in this way, you know they are they you know the Japanese children can follow up the spiritual development of the protagonists of the shonen manga. So you know they put their identity to the shonen manga, and you know they and they also experience you know. Uh, the story, you know, the story behind it. And, you know, I just, you know, just a few minutes ago, I just checked, and I just checked Hepsi Brada, it's the online, you know, the shopping service in Turkey. And I checked, you know, if, uh, here, one manga costs more than 20 lira, 20 tele. I mean, it's so expensive, like, I cannot afford to buy it. But in Japan, like, you know, uh, this 500 pages of weekly magazine is less than 20 tele. So, this is, uh, so that's why I keep telling that this sociological aspect is important. Like, you know, uh, we must not forget how close this animation and manga are to the Japanese children. And, you know, uh, as for the analysis of manga, like, you know, there are so many like YouTube programs or in articles or like in any, like a workshop in, in, in everywhere. And, you know, I, you know, and I don't want to repeat the same contents. So I'm mean, trying, and also since I am now trying to, you know, uh, organizing the uh, syllabus for the introduction to manga studies. So now, can I'm, now I'm trying to make some, I'm uh, gonna say formula, uh, the how we can understand this Japanese manga and anime. And, you know, and I just came up with three keywords to understand Japanese anime and manga. First, manga and anime as buildings roman. Buildings roman is the like, self-development of the protagonist. In, uh, in Turkish, we can say seiru suruk. Like seiru suruk is not Turkish, actually it's Arabic, but uh, seiru suruk is a spiritual journey of the protagonist. And so, and this especially shonen manga or shonen anime is, is one of the best, this buildings roman product. Uh, which is produced by Japanese, uh, Jap uh, by Japan, and also we must know manga anime has some kind of like a social criticism. Like it's really critical to the current situation. You know, they're not they're, they're not just saying that oh we Japanese are the best and we East Asians are you know, the coolest you know like ethnic in the world. Like they don't have this kind of perspective. They're always so critical, especially towards the authority. Like if you read. No, the One Piece is also the same. You know, they're pirates. Like they're, they're, uh, they are against the authority anyway. And also Naruto as well. And the, uh, 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 which one? The Full Metal Alchemist is also the same. Like they, the protagonists, they always encounter some kind of like injustice of the authorities. And they're, they're, uh, and they're always trying to find a way to you know, how, how they can deal with it. And also the third part, is that you know this manga anime as Japanese tradition? Like what I'm going to say, not only the method, but also Japan Japanese manga and anime is reproducing, actually preserving the Japanese like traditional religion or the culture of morality, and they even they are trying to reinterpret the content so that they can survive in this 21st century. First of all, this manga and anime as buildings, Roman. Oh, this is one of my favorite scenes of the Naruto. I don't know, um, like when I was a student, like Naruto was also popular in Turkey as well. Like, you know, I was staying in the student dormitory, uh, you know, uh, in the school and everybody was also you know, following the Naruto. And, you know, this is the one of the, oh, sorry. You know, this is one, the Naruto, actually it's gonna be a little bit spoiler. So if you, if you are just reading Naruto right now, you can just close the ears. Uh, you know, this thing is just Naruto just lost his sensei, you know, the teacher, and he got so shocked and upset and like devastated that, you know, and because he just noticed how much he was loved. You know, this love is also the important keyword in the shonen manga. And then another sensei, the teacher, that he came to me and he showed the, you know, you know, you are the most, uh, you know, he was studying that, you know, his sensei, Jiraiya, was so proud of Naruto. And this was a really important thing uh, to show that in relationship between sensei and student. And, 
also the importance of inheriting the knowledge. Uh, in the Naruto, there is a key was called, you know, the will of the fire, you know, Hino Ishi, or the Konoha no Ishi, the will of the you know, town, uh, you know, the village, that's what they call. And so, and Naruto was eventually, they, uh, he inherited not only the technique, uh, but, you know, the spirit of the Jiraiya Sensei. And another, another thing, uh, there was you know, uh, another interesting thing that, you know, this, uh, his sensei and his colleagues, actually now they become the enemy, like, you know, uh, Orochimaru and also the Tsunade, you know, they made an interesting discussion about who is the true ninja. And the, uh, one ninja said that, you know, true ninja, you know, the best ninja is the one who knows the technique, like ninjutsu, like ninja technique, like ninja. And, but, uh, Jiraiya Sensei, uh, he said, no, the strongest ninja, you know, actually ninjas means those who endure. Nin means endure. So those who can have, those who have the strong heart, who can deal with the difficulties. So, and if you read about like, you know, the Tasao literature, you know how sabr is an important keyword in the Islamic spirituality as well, right? Sabr. So actually, the, the true mu'min can be the true ninja, you know, those who know the importance of the sabr. So this is how actually Japanese children are learning the spirituality from the Japanese tradition. And also this is, and I, oh, this is also a little bit spoiler, so I don't, uh, I don't tell which thing is it, but uh, this is also, you know, this is another characteristic of Japanese manga. The characters are so humane, like, I can even say that there is, there are no hero. There is no Captain America. Like the, every character is so weak, every character is so fragile, but yet they are trying to, you know, uh, they never surrender to the power, or they always find a way to seek the truth. Like uh, so, in this way, like Japanese protagonists, especially this male, you know, they are like you know, uh, how can I say, showing the different picture of the masculinity. I think, because now, you know, in modern, you know, in this modern society, we tend to believe that, you know, real manness or masculinity is those who can be reserved always, you know, those who can like endure and everything or something like, you know, this is what you know, ideal it is. But in the scene, you know, they are also fragile. They are just, you know, people like us. And even this, uh, this is actually the Eren, it's the main protagonist in Attack on Titan. Like, you know, he is, he was not, he, uh, first of all, he's not strongest because Mikasa is much stronger, like he's, you know, friend, crossing much stronger than, he, than, than him. And also mentally, he's not strong as well. Like actually, like he was uh, not that, like so-so, Gideon himself. But, you know, uh, uh, by putting him as a protagonist, give us more, how can I say, like realistic dynamism of the human relationship. Like this is what I do. And another thing is manga anime is a social criticism. And, you know, this is came from the, you know, the, bad, you know, the hard uh, experiences of the Japanese, uh, uh, you know, Japanese faced you know, after the second world war, because, you know, we lost the war. And also we have the history that we invaded the other country as well. That it means we are not only the victim, but also we, put, uh, we bring harm to the others as well. And you know, uh, the later on, the uh, for example, the major manga animator like Miyazaki Hayao or any other like animator, you know, they have these experiences. Like you know, they have these experiences that you know the ones you know this Japanese like you know Japanese empire were trying to you know achieve something, but it didn't came, and just we left. It's just a scar which can be never forgotten. So. Uh, and this kind of tradition is still remain today. So uh, many, many of the major anime or the manga have this kind of anti-authority or anti-scientism because Japan is the only country who, 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 uh, who suffered the nuclear weapon as well. So, and, and yet we know that Japan is the most cutting edge, like a technological, like, you know, the country that we are also critical to the, our, the technology that we have built as well. And also the anti-war. So manga animes, animation is enjoyed universally, but it has this kind of like, you know, the local experiences. 
And anti-authority, it means like uh, some of the example could be like manga or anime, like counters this big story. Big story means the history. Like uh, if you are, uh, I don't know if I have, if we have like history uh, student of history department in this uh, discussion here, but we must not forget the history was always written by the victor. Victor means a winner. And the winner always write history. And the losers, they're not in the history, first of all. So that's why now, you know, you know, some of the university, they are trying to decolonizing the history, decolonizing curriculum project, or well, that's what they call. And, but Japanese manga and anime uh, has more disciplined method of this decolonizing the mindset. Say. Because they all, uh, you know, many major mangas or the animation, they focus on the marginalized individual. For example, in this corner of the world, you can, you, you can watch this animation in a Netflix as well. I definitely recommend you watch it. You know, this is about the war, the Second World War. But this is not about the soldiers. This is not about like war plane or like, you know, the cool tank who tried to like, you know, conquer the land or something. Like this is not about the, the story of the hero. This is about the ordinary citizen who tried to live their own daily lives during the Second World War in the village in Hiroshima. You know where the you know, nuclear weapon was you know, the bomb. So, but you know, in the this kind like big history, those people has always been forgotten, even in the Japanese history. Like uh, some of the right wings, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know if it's okay to talk about this kind of political things about Japan. But anyway, some of the people they try to how can I say idolize the experiences of a second world war, but it uh, just but it just not scratch the reality. The reality is that they are just, you know, millions of, you know, the citizen who just suffer. And another one is, oh, this is one of the most favorite in the manga right now, the Golden Kamui, Golden Kamui. And this is, uh, this manga is about the Ainu people in the Hokkaido, in the northern area of Japan. Ainu is the native Japanese, like, you know, we Japanese, like Japanese like me, we are not native. We just came from, the, you know, the continent. This uh, and this kind of Ainu people actually the ethnically, I think they are much closer to the Turkic ethnics and also the Native Americans. You know. and this Golden Kami is is can be world epoch making manga who put these minorities into the center of this kind of like, uh, of the like, dynamic like story uh, during and uh, after you know the uh, Japan and Russia war, and and this this manga you know it depicts so beautifully and the detail about the lives and the philosophy of this uh, Ainu people. Uh, Joe, yes? Can you make full screen the slides, uh, okay. please? Like this? Thank you, Joe. Okay. Golden Kami. And, you know, this Golden Kami is also become the, you know, the poster in the British Museum as well. So, you know, now it's a word rec uh, recognized in the manga and anime. And another thing is anti-scientism. Like, you know, I'm sure that everybody knows Pokemon. At least I know Pokemon. I grew up with Pokemon. And, you know, uh, this is not a manga. Actually, this is a video game. Like, you know, this is another imp important factor of the Japanese pop culture. You know, the video game and animations and manga are influencing each other. For example, like, you know, this Pokemon movie is based on some kind of events in the video game. So original is a video game and then animation was made. And I think this is a remake version, which I play as well. You know, the, uh, actually I have more for you. Wait, more for you. Anyway, so, <clears throat> Uh, I'm sure you don't know about the uh, Pokemon. You know, Pokemon is about you know how you know the protagonists they catch the Pokemon, the monsters called so-called Pokemon with a Pokeball, and this Pokeball is a, is a symbol of the of the science, the cutting edge science technologies. So, protagonists is somehow they feel that this science enable them to control. The world, or even like you know, at least they they can uh, they can manipulate you know the world's order, but in the end, you know, in this video game, they encountered one Pokemon. It's called Mewtwo. Mewtwo, and in that event, they uh, they found that you know this science 
is also producing the victims because this Mewtwo is a is the Pokemon made by clone technology, you know, clone, you know, copying technology. And this and this Mewtwo was living in like a small, uh, you know, the dungeon, like by himself, all alone. So uh, this video game itself is help this kind of like you know, not this is not just the entertainment, but it has this kind of like messages. That you know that you know it's keep telling that you know this is the first village that you know that the protagonist visited, and it said technology is incredible, but in the last thing, protagonists find out that actually technology is not everything. It has like two sides. It, it's like you know the coin, you know, two sides of the coins. It has a good size and also the bad size. And this, you know, the, mo uh, the movie especially focus on you know the this dark side of the technology. It's a multi strike back. I also watched it when I was 10 years old. You know, uh, it was a really good one. I think this is a remake version, but if you have time, I recommend you read. So even the video game, actually the video game is like a cutting edge tech in the entertainment, but they are also criticizing, you know, the reality of the 21st century. And, and we must also not forget the anti-war aspect. Like, you know, oh, this Metal Gear Solid is also the video game, uh, which, which I like. Uh, you know, I played a lot when I was a university student. Right? And this is Samurai X. It's by the samurai who, who lived, uh, you know, during the Meiji Restoration period. And he, wa he was worked for assessing, but he made a great repentance, you know, the Tauba. And he decided, you know, to protect, you know, the weak, those who don't have the power. And, you know, there is also the uh, uh, movie too. So right now I think the final series was, final series was released. So I remember to watch. And the Gundam, like I'm not, I haven't watched Gundam that much, but my father was so crazy about the, this gun, Gundam series. And this is also like a robot anime, but also, you know, uh, this is not just entertainment. Like, you know, there, there are so many scenes who are, who are depicting the victims of the war. And even the protagonists, like they eventually, the sum of the series, they eventually they lost uh, lost his mind, and 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 become the, also the victim of, of the, you know the big war. So, and it also depicts you know the lots of like in a, uh, you know, I can say, uh, anti authority things as well. And Metal Gear Solid too. Um, uh, this is this is a video game. It's just like a spy. Uh, it's like kind of spy movie. Uh, this like a, a snake is like a legendary spy, and he trying to uh, first he was working for like one country. Then he feel that he bet, he got betrayed, and and he and later he found find out the nation state was a problem of everything. So this uh, this legendary like you know, the spy he built his own nation in uh, in the ocean, and he said this uh, and he said that you know this will become like you know the only superpower to destroy uh, destroy the current like a political uh, you know situation so even when i even when i'm playing with a playstation 3 and you know, this is my excuse my uh, to my mother like when i was playing playstation my mother was always angry why are you playing video games so much like you are playing video games 24 hours a day and i said no this is not the game this is the philosophy like I'm learning the history of a nation state with this PlayStation. So please, uh, please, mom, just let me play this PlayStation. This is what I did. It didn't work out actually. <laughs> like I, I failed some tests. I may talk as well as I so you never know. But what I say is that you know uh, when we play it, like this is uh, also uh, this kind of game is like a role playing game. You know RPG. So the player can feel the life of the protagonist, and they they can even install their emotions so that's why this kind of like manga or anime or the video game are so influential uh, to the readers or the player and another factor is the preservation of Japanese culture you know the like as I said now Japan is a secular state uh, it means like you know the uh, uh, they don't teach their own traditions or like you know their own history like deeply in the public uh, public educations and uh, and not right now, you know, uh, <coughs> the villages are also being extinct, and this kind of traditional culture are also being forgotten. But sometimes manga uh, help us to remember our heritage again. Like uh, this one is a uh, This manga 
is, is this also animation version, but the original was manga. It's called Rakugo Shinchu. Uh, this is about the Japanese oldest, uh, like a uh, theater art. And you know it, uh, and it depicts the lives, uh, lives of you know these uh, two players, and you know, and before the coming out of this Rakugo Shinju manga, actually this uh, comedy play was being about to extinct in Japan, but thanks for this animation, since this was so well made, you know this Rakugo gained a new audiences, like younger generation. Uh, they come to know the Japanese tra traditional arts and they started to go to the theater. And now this Rakugo culture is now being revived again. And the Chihaya Fuyu, this is not shonen manga, this is shoujo manga, but, uh, but also I read this one, it's also really good. This is about the traditional uh, card game. When, when I say card game, it's, it's, it sounds like you know, the Pokemon card or something, but this is traditional card, card game. Uh, and <coughs> And this is also like uh, this card, uh, this traditional card game used a Japanese traditional poem. So, you know, when we read this manga, we can also, uh, we are also able to study our Japanese traditional poem as well. So we can study about his, uh, our own history. And Natsume Yujincho, Natsume Yujincho, this is a bit more like science fiction, but uh, this one also, you know, this protagonist show a different aspect of the you know, masculinity. Like it's different from like a macho looking guy in the Western like you know, animation the movie. And also, you know, in this uh, animation, there are lots of the spirits uh, have, uh, you know, the appears. And this and every spirit has actually have kind of like, uh, it's the not real, how can I say? It's based on our old Japanese folk telling culture as well. So when you study Nasume Yujincho, uh, we can study about like a folk, uh, you know, the folk telling as well. So in this way, the manga is not about just entertainment, but it's also reproducing or actually preserving a Japanese culture. And they can even showing the traditional arts in a much more attractive way for the younger generation. Then, you know, I'm sorry for you know, this long introduction. But then I will go to the case study Miyazaki anime. So what we can find out is Miyazaki anime. And, you know, I thought there was a discussion after that. So I would just briefly you know, make the uh, only make the point as well. So I, uh, I listed up these three keywords to analyze the Japanese manga and anime, like manga anime as buildings Roman, and manga anime as social criticism, and manga anime as Japanese traditions. And, when I watched, I watched Miyazaki animes again, like uh, yesterday, you know, I got so tired that I watched more than 10 animation to study again. You know, I don't think, you know, uh, I think spirited away is some kind of this building's Roman aspect. The protagonist also spiritually developed herself. So, but most of the Miyazaki animes, the protagonists are too already, already too matured and still so strong. So it doesn't have this kind of like a serious look process. But they have, uh, Miyazaki, uh, Miyazaki animation has more, uh, uh, how you say, his own taste in the social criticism and also his interpretation on the Japanese tradition. For example, in anti war story, the anti war, it's obvious, like, you know, this Ghibli company, they, uh, you know, they are so critical about the, about the last war. Some of this Hotaru no Haka, I don't know uh, what the English title is, maybe the grave. Uh, Hojam, it's uh, Grave of the Fireflies. Oh, okay, Grave of the Fireflies. Okay, in the direct relation. It's about, you know, how, yeah, actually, this is a really bad ending. Like, you know, I don't want to do a spoiler, but, you know, if you, if you will watch it, just be careful. Uh, it's really influential animation. It's about, you know, the children who tried to survive during the Second World War. And this is about, you know, Kaze Tachi no is a wind ghost. You know, the Miyazaki is the last movie. Uh, it's about the one mechanic, you know, engineer who tried to build his own ideal plane, but he ended up building the war plane. And he also become like a victim, but also the casual of the, of the, you know, uh, of the war. So this is a, uh, also another tragic movie. But, but when, uh, when, we, when we watch the movie, like, you know, uh, we can learn the, uh, let's say, the detail, let's say, 
we can learn something different from the, you know the big history of the Japan the way well, when the, you know authorities always try to produce and also about you know the anti technology is also the you know the main keyword mm -hmm. in the Ghibli animation this is the castle in the sky uh, this is one of his earlier work and the story itself is quite simple and you know yeah there's a good guy and a bad guy and he's cool he's cute and you know and they try to save the world but you know but uh, if we look about you know the you know the philosophy behind it actually it's, it's quite you know good uh, good you know well built as well for example you know actually there is like a lost civilization lost civilization and <clears throat> and you know the uh, Hayao, uh, one of the things I like about uh, Hayao Miyazaki is you know he try he always try to to depict the technology is not just a tool of humanity. Like even this robot, uh, I think he was the weaponized like robot uh, during the in the lost uh, civilization. But uh, this kind of thing that he also have some kind of heart. And he tried to get you know, tried to get interact with you know the human being. So. And and this one is the you know a, uh, a important thing in the uh, Valley of the Wind. You know Kazuna Tani no Naoshika. You know Naoshika. Uh, this is all, also uh, you know uh, when we watch about Hayao Miyazaki's film, we can find that he had this some kind of like apocalyptic like a kind of apocalyptic like a worldview, like, you know, this kind of like a day of judgment, like, you know, kind of philosophy that seemed that he believes that, you know, the technology is eventually leads us to the ending of our civilization. And, and this, you know, uh, these giants are, I think, you know, this is also the symbol of, you know, the, uh, like a mechan you know, the modern civilization. And, you know, they destroy, and this, they destroy the whole society or the whole nation. And the, uh, this, the and the world of Naoshika is the uh, you know uh, you know the world after this kind of like catastrophe. And one of my, one of my, uh, but my most favorite is this Princess Mononoke, like Mononoke Hime. As, as I said, that you know the good Japanese manga always try to depict the marginalized people, you know. Uh, compared to the big history, it's called I don't know why or why I put it today. It's it's called subaltern aspect. Subaltern is that how the marginalized people are actually the core, it are actually the essence uh, to understand our heritage. For example, he protagonist it's called Ashitaka. Uh, he is the Ainu people. He uh, his character is based on the native Japanese, which is now already minority and only living in the, uh, the northern side of Japan. And also in this village, uh, you can find there was uh, there was a strong woman was running this village, like leading the the others. But when we look at the history of the Japan, you know uh, this is just right. You know in the history, women are always marginalized. But the Miyazaki Hayao believed that no, actually they are actually the keeper of all the culture society. So they, so he put the uh, this character as an important role, and now this kind of spirit. Now in the secular society, like this kind of spirituality, or like how do I say, or the traditional religion is also like de-enchanted and marginalized as well. But Hayao Miyazaki, he put every kind of marginalized people, marginalized character in the history of Japan. And he put, <clears throat> and he tried to depict the, uh, he tried to show us what could be the essence of the Japanese culture. And now Value of the Wind has also the original manga version. And it says, it says, Seijo to Oda Kokoso, Seme da to Yukoto ni. Naze sono hito tachi, sono hito tachi, naze kizukana katta no garo. If you want to understand what, you know, what the taste of Japanese language is, just please taste, take my Japanese course. Uh, I'm sure there uh, is a Japanese course in the next semester as well. It says, Seijo means purity and Odaku means corruption. And this is the, one of the uh, strongest philosophy of Hayao Miyazaki. He believes that human dignity is life somewhere between purity and corruption. And this is really obvious when we watch The Princess Mononoke. Like there's no bad guy, there's no simple bad guy. Everybody has their own method, have their own way. 
everybody has their own creed. You know, Jesus wants to live their own lives, right? Like there is no like, you know, I don't know. I don't want to criticize the other animations. I don't give an example, but you know, there is no like, you know, a complete bad guy who tried to conquer the world or banish the planet. And there is like kind of a hero who tried to save the world. You know, the, especially, you know, after the Princess Monon, okay? Uh, Hayao Miyazaki has started to depict this kind of like, you know, so, uh, I mean, complicatedness of the human society. And, you know, and uh, Spirited Away is also saying that you can find like, you know, the vicious, like a villain, like, you know, just, uh, just every character has their own philosophy or her own discipline, but the, because of the difference of the understanding, like, you know, this uh, misfortune has also, like, you know, occurred, or even the this beautifulness of humanities lies somewhere between this kind, uh, uh, kind of uh, complexity. Like, this being complex is a bless. This is what, you know, Hayao Miyazaki believes. And also, as the preserve of the Japanese tradition, you know, this Princess Mononoke is quite, uh, you know, interesting that he, uh, he tried to reinterpret that traditionally believed Japanese spirit and, and put it into the, you know, the important role in his animation. For example, this Deidara Bocchi, you know, this Deidara Bocchi, uh, you know, uh, this spirit was, you know, uh, uh, there are so many stories about you know these spirits in everywhere, in especially in the village. And you know, I think there is also a story in my village as well. This you know, this is some kind of like you know, the ghost or the kind of, you call yokai or this or the spirit who was you know who was living in the mountain and has some spiritual powers. And also the tatarigami. Uh, so uh, this is about you know this is based on Japanese animist uh, animistic or the Shintoistic worldview. This good god. And also the bad god. Actually, this is not god. It's, it's more proper to call as a spirit. But this tatari is like you know, the, uh, the spirit who cast the curse onto the others. But when we watch the Princess Mononoke, this, uh, you can notice that this uh, cursing spirit is also not a bad guy. Actually, he was also the victim of the technology. But uh, protagonists find out that who give the harm to this, you know, once a good spirit, uh, once a good spirit, but he found out that, you know, this spirit was harmed by the leader of, you know, the character of the villages, but she didn't have also the bad intention, you know, what all he, all she wanted to do is just build life and, and, and keep, and keep the life of the, you know, the villages. So everybody have you know everybody has their own reason. So I think this is about you know what makes the Miyazaki film more attractive and beautiful. And the Kotodama, you know, the, this is about you know also about you know something which uh, which were believed in the Japanese anime uh, animism. Anyway. So and uh, this uh, this one interview uh, it's called that in the. And Hayao Miyazaki says a very, a very interesting thing that you know, he said that animation is the modern interpretation of animism. So animism is not, uh, he said that animism is not a systematic religion, uh, but this is kind of like a method that we put soul to the art. So before, uh, so before animation, this is just a picture, it's just still picture has no emotion or like, you know, and activities or the movement. But he said that, you know, that this animation is, is bleeding the soul into the picture so that, you know, we can feel the emotion. And, <clears throat> and I think this is really, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, this is the important interpretation that, you know, he is also somehow trying to reinterpret our own heritage and he believed that this is the reinterpreted cutting edge like a Japanese tradition. So, yeah. and uh, this is no Hayazo, Hayao Miyazaki film. Yeah, this is actually the Takahata's, uh, no, is it Takahata? Uh, this is the same also, of, yeah, Takahata. Uh, director Takahata made him through movie. Uh, this is about, you know, uh, I don't, uh, it's not raccoon. I forgot the name. It's in Japanese it's called tanuki. Uh, okay. 
like if you have time, just please Google it. I don't know how to call it in English in this animal, but uh, this is and uh, this is about you know this uh, about the spirit who try to save their own life lifestyle against the urban development. You know this is also what happened. You know, I, you know this not not about this animal, but this is this is also the reality of the Japanese society. Like everybody's, you know, sometimes sometimes I said, oh, I came from Japan. And sometimes my friend Joe said, oh, you came from the cutting edge technological country. And, but they, they has two sides. Like one side is, yeah, like you know, uh, Japan is a really clean discipline. It has lots of like you know, the uh, like new technologies. But the other hand is that we are, uh, you know, this. Uh, drastic rapid development is destroying our own, uh, you know, the nature or, or the you know traditional lifestyle. And actually, this spirit and spirits are the symbol of you know our traditional lifestyle. And you know, and this uh, director is trying to depict as a comedy that how actually like modern modern Japan is trying to abandoning their own heritage. And this kaonashi, this is what, uh, what I did, uh, <clears throat> what I show up in the beginning of the session. Oh, this is this character. It's called kaonashi. Kaonashi is also not, not the scary, you know, the scary looking uh, like ghost or something. But Hayao Miyazaki said, and this is like a metaphor of the modern people. The kaonashi means faceless, you know, uses. You know. And Hayao Miyazaki criticizing the modern, you know, the modern people, you know, they don't have any intentions. They don't have any will, just faceless, just sitting on the train and going nowhere. Something. So if you know this kind of like you know the keywords or the cultural, the historical background of Japanese society, you can taste the Japanese uh, Japanese animation much tastier and much much deeper. So there it. So I just you know prepared a slide. Uh, uh, like this, this is the end of our know, presentation. But what I say here is that you know, any manga or animation is not just entertainment. Like, like you can forget the others, uh, other messages, but just remember this: like Japanese manga animation is the philosophy. This is the art. This is the traditional art. And if you know how to analyze this manga, you can know the deepness of the manga animation. And <clears throat> so. Uh, if you have so, uh, what I recommend is that you know, uh, if there are some uh, any other pe uh, any other students who haven't watched Japanese animation, just pick one who who might uh, if you might get interest, and and try to study the you know the culture or the historical background behind the manga. Like you know, currently like I recommend this Brunoni Kenshin Samurai X. It's a good movie nowadays. A movie version as well, so it's easy to enter, and. And and then you can know how uh, how you know eventually that you can learn how you can analyze it and understand you know the the uh, complex uh, you know uh, like philosophy behind it. Yeah, but so thank you very much. So you know this is what I wanted to talk. So if you have any questions, uh, you know please ask. Uh, thank you, John. You can raise your hands if you want to ask. Oh, by the way, Tanuki is translated Raccoon Kyope. Okay, Raccoon Kyope. Oh, thank you. But it's Raccoon Kyope. Oh, English. So even in Turkish. I don't know how they call it in. Uh, no, English though. So do you have any question? Now you can open your microphone. No. Oh, shall I put Kaunashi face again? Can I ask? Yeah, of course. Okay. Hojam, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, really entertaining. By the way, I, I was wondering if maybe uh, you had any recommendations list, maybe about your favorite anime and manga that you can share with us later on. Uh, that would be really appreciated. But um, I wanted to ask you about a comparison between Japanese manga anime and Western produced anime. Like, did you notice any uh, differences in terms of production or anything that I would be interested in that? Because um, one thing I noticed personally is uh, there's more, there's something different definitely in the production 
-hmm. from the production to the content, but also to uh, music even. I was searching this. I mm -hmm. found an interview, old interview from 1999. I think it's a famous one with the Joe Hisaishi, his name is, right? The sound, uh, the music. Yeah, he's uh, a famous composer of the Ghibli's animation. Yes. He says something interesting. Uh, I'm just going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to read this paragraph of it. Yeah, of course. He says, according to Disney staff, foreigners or non-Japanese feel uncomfortable if there is no music for more than three minutes. He laughs. You see this in the Western movies, which have music throughout. Especially, it is the natural state for a non-Japanese animated film to have music all the time. However, in the original Laputa, there is only one hour worth of music in the two hour and four minute movie. There are parts that do not have any music for seven to eight minutes. So we decided to redo the music as the existing soundtrack will not be suitable for the markets outside of Japan. I would love to hear your comments on that. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. First of all, like, you know, uh, I want to start with the comparison with the Japanese animation and the other like animation. Is that what I found is that uh, First of all, I can say that even Western entertainments was influenced by the Japanese art as well. For example, like Star Wars series. Like is, uh, you know, the director even admit that he got influenced by the samurai movies or you know, the stories. And you know, this Jedi is actually, you know, the model is a samurai, you know, in the Japanese warrior. But when it comes to new series, I feel that you know there is a huge gap between like a Japanese culture and Western culture. Like, have you watched new series of Star Wars? I haven't watched any Star Wars personally. <laughs> oh, the, oh, the first of all, you should watch Star Wars. Yes, I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, but, you know, new series. So the old series <laughs> is there is always the sensei and student relationship, you know, the sheikh and the muridic kind of thing, um. like master and disciple story. Like this Jedi master is trying to teach some of the philosophy to the discipline, uh, the disciple. And the Sabo, you know, he struggled to acquire some kind of truth. But in this new series, I know there's a spider, spoiler, but this protagonist, without without any masters, she suddenly becomes so strong. You know, it's, it's so self-building, it's so individualistic. And for Japanese audiences, even like at least for me, it's quite awkward. Like, how come she can be that strong without any support? As if, like, you know, as long as you have kind of like, you know, uh, you you can believe in yourself, then you can acquire acquire everything. But in the Japanese, especially shonen manga like Naruto or the One Piece or like a Dragon Ball or the Slam Dunk, even a sport sport animation the manga, you know, there was always teacher. So in this way, like you know, Japanese manga or animation, they don't believe in the equality of the human being. There was always a spiritually like uh, like higher being than you, and he would try to guide you. But even these masters and teachers were not perfect human being. They are also fragile and humane. They make mistakes. But this master and students they try to complete each other. You know, it's based on this kind of an Asian Yin Yang kind of worldview. Like these two opposite elements. Actually, they cannot exist without the other. But you know, in this modern Western entertainment, yeah, like somehow if you if you bite but uh, if you bite with a spider or if you took some medicine, or even if you're born in a special family, you're already strong, and that's it. Yeah, maybe you know they will encounter some kind of like spiritual crisis, but they don't have like a clear guide. So this is yeah, this is what I like about you know, for example, like later uh, later Spider-Man uh, movie. Spider-Man Homecoming coming. I like I like the one I like that one because the Spider-Man was still amateur. Like he has some kind of sensei, you know, the Iron Man. So in the Japanese I like this kind of stuff. But uh, so in this way, like we can see some kind of differences of the verb view. And about the music, I'm not especially on the music, but it's really good, uh, you know, the comment. No, uh, maybe I'll yeah, I will think carefully about this aspect later on. But uh, when I played video games, I found that you know this Jap game music was also really Japanese game music was also so unique. Like in every important scene, there was like you know really influencing uh, music. 
behind it. Like, you know, uh, personally, I like Final Fantasy series. I, I don't know if you, if you know this series, but, you know, I, yeah, I, I am a literary otaku, so I, you know, I know hundreds of <laughs> thousands of animation and anime video games, but you know, this Final Fantasy, uh, especially before the PlayStation 3, you know, when still, you know, mach, you know the uh, console machine, but not like developed enough, enough, you know, they put a lot of messages in the music. Like when there was like a complicated cat character appear in the scene, you know, the melody was compiled with the multiple like codes to show the complexity of the character. And while, the, while there's a different character, they use a different codes and they also the others, like, you know, it's even much more, even has much more like, you know, philo uh, philosophy than the Western video game at that time. So maybe like, yeah, like in this Japanese, or some kind of different aesthetics thing. So, thank you, Hoda. So we can move to the Anita, and there is some questions. You can write the questions on the chat box also. Um, hello, I I would like to ask Hoda um, about this. You have also noted in the slides this absence of uh, evil and. Um, good. Like, I would like to ask this, um, there is no straight boundary between the good and evil, especially in the anime movies, uh -huh. and, and now in the anime, and I think it is now getting, uh, actually, we see the reflection in, in the Japanese movies too, not only the animes, but the movies, that uh -huh. it becomes really difficult to uh, understand who is evil, who is not, who is good, who is not, and uh -huh. like uh, Shingeki no Kyojin, uh, is a good ex example. Spirited Away is a good example. Princess Mononoke also. So, mm -hmm. where do we get this? How can we um, attribute this character of this non boundary of good and evil in the Japanese culture? And I think this becomes a culture in Hollywood too, that villains are becoming more loved than the good people these days, like such as the, uh, especially in the Marvel. Mm -hmm. So how can we, like, what kind of uh, the character of Japanese culture do you think has a, uh, has a connection in this? Yeah, like, you know, uh, while this is the, one of the, you know, the uh, obvious characteristic of the Japanese manga, it's really far, hard to track the, the origin. But when I watch the, for example, like Marvel Cinematic Universe series, I also wonder why the always bad guy is like a blue colored face and machos like in it. There, there was always like a typical format, like in the Western, like in uh, entertainment. While the Japanese uh, anime and characters, they, even the enemy was so diverse, I think. But uh, I can say that one of the origin is the, based on our traditional philosophy uh, of, you know, this Taoism, uh, because, or even, I, I don't especially call Taoism, but you know, any like Chinese, ancient Chinese philosophy, uh, which deny the duality of this world. Divide means like good and bad, or the hard and soft, or like hot and cold. So like eventually, the reality will they observe these two opposite and show you the different color. And it might be, uh, it might be like you know maybe the modern, you know, the Japanese anime and manga are still influenced by this kind of like traditional worldview, but. Another, uh, as a sociological or historical aspect, uh, for example, one manga author, he said that this is what they experienced during the Second World War. Because during the war, you know, Japanese government always saying that, you know, we are, the, we are doing the right thing to do. You know, we are the hero of this world. We will save, you know, the other Asian like neighbors against this devil, you know, uh, uh, European colonialism. But, after the war, you know, when we lost the war, you know, they started to say that, oh, we made a mistake. You know, actually, you know, actually, you know, the, uh, uh, this America will teach me, you know, the right path. And, and now we are enlightened. So what, uh, so what we do is that we should embrace this, you know, the Western culture or the Western morality, and we must develop our country again. Like, you know, the, the same, uh, the same politician will start to, start to talk the completely opposite thing. You know, before and after the war, and this one also came to think that okay, then actually there is no justice in the power. 
where there is no, there can be no justice, which is like in, uh, spoke by the authority. And he said that true justice lies between, uh, lies in the sincerity of the human being. He said that, you know, the individual altruism could be the new, should be the new keyword for the Japanese citizen. And in this kind of, you know, uh, in this kind of like a microcosmos review, then uh, you might find out actually there is no like, you know, typical good people or typical bad people. You know, this is always the, uh, you know, uh, propagation by the, you know, the power. power. Actually, when we look at our, our cross relationship with the family or the friends, you know, humans are, comp you know, complicated, you know, complex. It's not easy to understand. And this is a re reality. And this manga also said, you know, we should start from this ground that there is no simplicity in this, uh, in this world, in this reality. Like, uh, yes, exactly. And I think um, your the connection between Taoism, I think, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's embedded in, into the culture. It's already in the culture. So it directly reflects to what uh, the, the people from this culture does and produce. Yeah. So I think it has this kind of spiritual, back, I don't know, philosophical background and also this historical background. It's both, mm -hmm. I think. It's like a mixture of our experiences and also heritage. Okay, thank you very much, Sam. Hey, if you don't have further questions, I can ask some one question. Oh, beautiful. Uh, I wonder what is the perception of Japanese people, uh, especially in general, in uh, elders' perception uh, about the animes? Oh, the and animes? Yeah, and for who watches anime, you know, there is a general understanding for uh, anime watchers like Veep or Geeks. No, uh, right now everybody is watching anime. Now, even my professor, when I was uh, when I was a university student, he was a big fan of anime. Actually, he uh, uh, every class, you know, beginning of the class, he was talking about you know the popular anime that he likes or something. So right now, the how can I say the manga animation culture gained some citizenship. You know, now it's like a culture which enjoy by everybody. But I think before the, you know, it is, you know, but I think this is a really new phenomenon. Like, you know, uh, even quite often, like you know, these, you know, the people who love anime or, or the manga are categorized like otaku, you know, the geeks. And it's not like it, it didn't have like positive meaning. Yeah, but right now, like, no, for example, the demons, the movie of Demon Slayer, like now, yeah, almost every citizen have watched this movie. So. Now this is a nat like a, the national phenomenon, I can say. Thank you, Ojam. Ojam, uh, also as last question, maybe uh, someone sent me a private question. I will ask. Uh, when we look at the manga cause. Uh, isekai animes we yeah. can see some psychological problems it yeah. seems like they put their desire fear and secret ambitions in the scenario yeah. especially suicide thought yeah. uh, he see that uh, ter this is terrifying and disgusting and what do you think about this maybe these ideas come from japanese uh, crisis he says Oh yeah, I think. Oh yeah, I think you know much. You know a lot about the Japanese animation. You know this isekai thing. You know this reincarnation type type of thing that you die in this world and re you reincarnate in a different world. But in that world, you become the hero or something. You know this this kind this type of animation is like a drug. You know, it's a drug for the young people. You know, they just want to escape from this world, and they just want to you know enjoy something uh, which which they are dreaming. You know. And I think, you know, this is now, I think this is not right now the dark side of, it shows the dark side of the Japanese society, contemporary society right now, because now we young generation, most of us, we don't find any hope in our society because our society is so stagnated, stagnated, you know, it just, there is no innovations and the politicians, you know, they're all crooked. You know they don't they don't they don't care anything about us, and we don't have any job, and even we got graduate from university. You know we are not respected. 
you know, and this, especially if you live in the major big cities like Tokyo or Osaka or Nagoya or any other, like we are so atomized, you know, atomized mean like super individualized. We don't have any strong mutual human relationship and we can achieve what you wanted to do. So that's why like, in, uh, it's something in somehow, you know, uh, you know, our generation feel that we are stuck. And this kind of animation gives some kind of, a, you know, the uh, uh, like a good lie, you know, like remedy to escape this kind of reality. So. Uh, okay, there is uh, one question uh, from Malik Koja again in the chat. I can read if you can't read. No, which one? Uh, have you seen the recent Islamic anime movie, The Journey? Uh, would you love to hear your thoughts about it, Ojun? Oh, I haven't watched it. Uh, please share with me then. Yeah, because this is one of my uh, dreams as well. Like, I, I, know, I want to, uh, you know, I was dreaming, what if the, the Turkish artists can produce like an animation, the manga, which is based on their own heritage? For example, like Yunus Emre or Niyazi Misli, or Suleiman Kanuni, or any other thing that like you have lots of heroes. You have lots of not only like typical heroes, you know, you know, it's just they are like in the same can be the symbol of the humanities you know, who are really complicated, who know the arts and also have faced difficulty. And I'm sure the Japanese will love this kind of uh, this kind of character. And now, right now, I am organizing the uh, like reading group with the Professor Recep Shentruk about Yunus Emre's reading. And even uh, like Muslims, they don't know much about, you know, the Turkish heritage, you know, and we are not producing, uh, we are not showing, sharing our heritage, you know, uh, enough uh, to the world, I think. Uh, so, yeah, like, you know, if you can create, create this kind of Japanese style, you know, animations or, 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 I don't know, or uh, like a Dilidish Eruturgu's manga version or something, I'm sure the Japanese will love it. So I, I right now I am encouraging, you know, my Turkish students, just if you have the, uh, you know, you have a gift of, you know, uh, drawing, some, uh, drawing anything, just write manga, like write manga about this Turkish society or Turkish history. And you can change this world, like literally, I believe in it. I agree, Dr. John. So thank you, Ojan, uh, and other attendants for your participation. Uh, we can finish here if you want, Ojan. Oh, okay. Thank you, okay. thank you. Thank you so much. Ah, tamam. Ben bugün beni davet ettiğiniz çok teşekkür ederim. Biz teşekkür ederiz. Evet. Bir de şey, ben bu Japonya araştırma merkezinde böyle şey bir şey etkinlik diye yapıyorum. Merak ediyorsanız ya şey Instagram'da şey. Uh, hesap var. Oraya takip edebilirsiniz. Yani. You can follow our program. And some that appear that also you know, talk as well. Like Ifu Japonia or something. Yeah. Yes, you write it uh, to the chat box. And also before before leaving, we 